From the food we eat, the air we breathe, the land we dwell, to the health of our body and mind, and the well-being of all things in the universe. Unlock the science with Chula Radio Plus. Welcome to Unlock the Science. I'm Lawan Jirasuladeh. Today I'm leading you to the issues of a growing religion and the role of food production to serve these religious people especially. This industry has been expanding unexpectedly fast and could also benefit a large number of populations in the world. There were 1.8 billion Muslims in the world as of 2015, or roughly 24% of the global population, according to an estimate by Pew Research Center, which is based in Washington, D.C. However, Islam is the fastest growing major religion. It's expected that if the current demographic trends continue, the number of Muslim is to exceed the number of Christian by the end of this century. This is because the population of Muslim is expected to grow more than twice as fast as the overall world population during this period. In the next 40 years, Muslim could account for nearly 3 billion of world population, or almost one in three of people on Earth. Their high growth is mainly due to their high birth rate, compared to the other major religions. That would make them the largest religion in the world, replacing Christianity according to the same estimate by Pew Research Center. With such a growth of Muslim population, the demand of food particularly consumed by Muslims, or halal food, will be undoubtedly rising as well. For Thailand alone, the export of halal food jumped almost 41 times in the 10 years from only 147 million U.S. dollars in 2003 to over 6 billion U.S. dollars in 2013, according to the country's top planning agency. Halal in Arabic means permissible or allowed, according to the London-based Halal Food Authority. To be eligible for being certified or accredited as halal, food, particular meat, has to be processed in prescribed way. For instance, the animal has to be slaughtered without any suffering, and it should be carried out by a Muslim. In Thailand, Chulalongkorn University housed a key institute that contributed to the production of halal food and other halal products. I've talked to Associate Professor Dr. Whitney Datlan, founding director of Halal Science Center, to learn about the role of this institute in the halal industry. Dr. Winai, could you tell us briefly how the Halal Science Center come into its existence? Yes. I started my work in the uh, Faculty of Allied Health Science, Jilalongkot University. And uh, I, I started with a small laboratory called uh, Halal Science Laboratory at that time in 1994. Yeah. And uh, we accumulated uh, some work for many years until the year of uh, 2003. Uh, the government uh, finally decided to, to have the Halal Science Laboratory work closely with the Islamic Organization for Halal Accreditation. And then uh, there was a cabinet resolution on uh, 13 of August in uh, 2003 uh, for the establishment of the Halal Science uh, Center at Chulalongkorn University. You mentioned accreditation or certification of halal food. As I understand, the agency that provides certification of being halal is the Central Islamic Council of Thailand, which is based in Bangkok or Islamic councils in the provincial level. So what is the role of the Halal Science Center in the halal industry? Yeah, in, in, in Thailand, is uh, something uh, different from other countries. Uh, for the halal accreditation, uh, in other countries, 
Uh, actually, they, they are performed by Islamic organization. Uh, for example, the Islamic organization under the government or Islamic organization uh, uh, as a, a private sector, uh, something like a masjid or association or uh, something else. Uh, but in Thailand, we have the act, uh, so-called uh, the Islamic Organization Administration Act 1997. Um, this act f f finally designed the authorization f for the halal accreditation to the Islamic Organization, like uh, Central Islamic Council of Thailand. Then under Central Islamic Council of Thailand, there are altogether 40 provincial Islamic committees. Then uh, it together uh, come from the same act of Thailand. And then it means that uh, the Islamic organization, their duty is about the inspection and uh, provide uh, accreditation uh, for the halal product that would like to have the, uh, the figure for export or something. Actually, they send us a uh, food sample. If they finally feel that uh, this is some uh, um, doubt about the contam contamination of uh, food uh, exclusively haram, then they send to us. They send to us. And then we have to use uh, our laboratory equipment uh, together with the uh, uh, methodology to investigate the presence of the haram uh, in the product. Can you give me some examples, like how many samples uh, they send for, like maybe per week or per month? Oh, well, not, not much. But I, I, I will give you, for example, the, since the year 2004 until now, we already analyzed uh, more than 100 70,000 food sample. This means your Halal Science Center provides the service of examining whether food or other products are contaminated by substance or things that make it not being Halal or Haram. This your center also provides training and other services for people who plan to set up a Halal production line and help them set up such a system. We have, we have both. Uh, for, for example, for foreign uh, scientists, uh, many countries send uh, their scientists to have a training with us in Chulalongkorn University. And at, at that time, we have the kindness of the Ministry of uh, foreign, foreign Affairs. Then uh, they grant us some uh, scholarship to provide to the foreign uh, scientists uh, to have a training here at Jilalongkot University, they, they're so happy. Uh, until now, we have uh, already trained, I, I think, more than 100 uh, foreign scientists here at Jilalongkot University. Uh, that one thing. Another, uh, we also set up the system for the factory. Uh, we, we, we call the system that uh, halalization. Halalization. Uh, you may know about the standardization. Standard is just a paper. But how to implement the regulation in the standard into practice in factory? This is we call standardization. But for halal, we call it halalization. Or maybe we call it uh, halal standardization. It's uh, how to, in practice, implement the the standard uh, to practice in the factory. And then we have to train a uh, worker in the factory uh, together with the administration team you know, in the factory, even a scientist or uh, an administrator uh, in the factory. Then uh, finally they can understand well about the halal, halal standard and uh, can implement properly. How about your research and development of substances that could replace non-halal elements in various products? That that the main purpose of the Halal Science Center. Uh, 
we really have uh, many uh, scientists uh, working on the development of the new product. Uh, for example, the Haram replacement product. Uh, if finally we found uh, something Haram or not allowed uh, for using in the halal food industry, it doesn't mean that uh, it's not allowed only. We have to find the replacement. Then uh, this is a choice for the industry to use. Uh, for example, uh, some gelatin. Uh, generally, uh, gelatin in the food industry uh, are, are not halal. They produce from uh, from uh, pig uh, fat, right? And then we have to find uh, some uh, halal source. For example. Uh, we finally developed the gelatin from the plant or even uh, from the other kind of uh, animal like a fish. Oh, uh, good thing is about the cow gelatin. Halal food is regarded as clean food. Could you explain to us what does it mean clean in halal food industry? Uh, halal the meaning of halal is uh, allow, permit. It means that the uh, Muslim can consume, consume without sin. But all the time when uh, halal mentioned in Al-Quran, in the book, uh, it's not mentioned alone, halal. All the time have a, a, a other word, toyib. Toyib, it means clean. Then, uh, according to the is Islamic uh, regulation, it means that uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, asks us to use only halal and clean food. We will take a short break now. You are listening to Unlock the Science on Chula Radio Plus. As the Muslim population has been expanding fast, there has been invention to produce food, particular meat, to serve this growing religious people. This industry has been known as the industry of alternative meat. According to a report of UK based Barclay Investment Bank, published in May 2019, the market of alternative meat will grow from the current 14 billion US dollars, or 1% of the global meat industry to 140 billion US dollars or 10% of the global meat industry in fewer than 10 years from now. Alternative meat includes protein produced from plants such as soybean, tofu, mushrooms, lentil, and various kinds of fruits and meat cultivated in laboratories. Cultivated meat is meat created from animal cells in laboratories. Dr. Winai, who is a medical nutritional biochemist by academic training, will tell us more about this industry of alternative meat. Dr. Winai, as they say alternative meat is clean meat, then would alternative meat simply be regarded as halal? Uh, in Islam, allow or not allow, or halal or not halal, is uh, defined in al Quran. Yeah, it means that uh, if we said halal, it means that it's no presence of haram. Yeah, and uh, if uh, the plant is not automatically that, thickly that the plant is all halal. If the plant is uh, uh, contain uh, some kind of poison, then it's not halal. Uh, until uh, all poison is uh, removed. Uh, this is then is halal. Uh, for the alternative meat, uh, for example, uh, if the alternative meat is uh, contain some haram, then it's not halal. Then it's not automatically halal. For example, if finally we have to use uh, some kind of uh, plant, uh, to produce uh, meat, right? uh, so something like a soybean, 
this is halal. But it doesn't mean that the process for the production is halal. Uh, because uh, in order to produce meat, it still has uh, some ingredient added inside. Uh, we have to find whether the uh, added uh, ingredient is halal. Do you see any concerns in alternative meat? People may see meat cultivated in laboratory as being unnatural. It may not be as nutritious and tasty as natural meat. When, when we said uh, alternative meat, it means that uh, some kind of meat that we have to replace uh, for the natural meat. Uh, for example, uh, like a vegetarian, right? Uh, if they would like to have meat, but finally they cannot uh, eat meat uh, directly, they have to find uh, some uh, uh, vegetarian uh, kind of a product. Uh, then for, for, for the alternative meat, uh, that kind of alternative meat that I explained that uh, it's not automatically halal. But for the uh, cultivate meat, it's different. Cultivate meat uh, actually is mean that uh, the meat that uh, finally is uh, produced from the animal DNA. For example, uh, something like a uh, stem cell. They obtain from the animal source, right? And then they produce uh, in the library uh, for the uh, increase of the tissue. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in vitro, in the test tube, right? And if it's halal or not halal, it depends on the source of the stem cell. For example, if the stem cell come from the haram source, for example, come from pig, from, come from a carnivorous animal, because uh, halal, is, it doesn't mean that uh, uh, anything except pork or except pig, no. There's still many kind of the animal. There all together are twelve uh, classes of the haram. Then uh, we have to be sure that the the source of the animal is not from haram. Then, uh, if it's not from haram, the cultivated meat is possibly halal. Production of cultivated meat is currently much more expensive than natural meat, which is a key reason of its limited availability at the moment. But uh, I guess it could become less pricey in the future with the development of technology. Do you see the possibility of seeing cultivated meat in any common meat stores in the near future? I think this is uh, the product for the future. Uh, for the animal farming, they produce a lot of the gas, methane, carbon dioxide, something, and something. Uh, this is uh, one of the source of the global warming for the animal farming, right? And they try to decrease, decrease. And uh, this is the way. Uh, now, very expensive very expensive, but not in the future. In the future, uh, much more, less expensive, uh, much uh, less expensive. I think, for example, it's something like a high pro, uh, hydroponic vegetable, right? At the beginning, very expensive, but now very, very cheap and uh, very easy to find, right? Uh, we before that uh, we scare scare to eat about the hydroponic we we, we don't know whether it's uh, organic or non organic right because uh, they are uh, produced from uh, some chemicals right but now we accept uh, the cultivated meat is the same is the same at the beginning i, I think uh, the consumer feel uncomfortable <laughs> to consume, right? But not in the future. I think in the future, finally, they have a, a very good attitude 
on the cultivated meat. Finally, do you see the role of Halal Science Center in the production of cultivated meat in the future? I think in several aspects. Um, the first, maybe uh, the role of the producer. For, for example, we plan to develop uh, uh, the technique uh, for the production of the cultivated meat, uh, exclusively halal cultivated meat. Um, this is uh, our uh, research, right? Another thing is about the system that we have to use. This is, we have to consider also the halal system. It's not only the product, also the procedure. And uh, this is uh, the way. And uh, for the, I, I, I think something very important for Thailand that we lack so much is about the technology and the acceptance of the consumer. I, I, I think uh, Thailand is uh, very keen in the uh, food industry uh, and as well as the agriculture. But for the innovation, sometimes we dare not to initiate the innovation. And uh, sometimes the other people said uh, Thailand something like a uh, OEM country. We produce uh, from the order, or even if we copy from the technology of uh, other country. And uh, in the future, I think uh, Thailand, especially for the scientists, we have to uh, brave enough to introduce our innovation, especially for the agriculture. I think uh, we uh, we we accustom uh, to follow the technology of other too much. In the future, we have to lead. I, I hope that uh, if we lead, if we dare uh, to lead, then uh, I think uh, we we're going to be the leader of the industry, especially for the agro industry. Uh, not for this region, or also worldwide. The industry of halal food does not concern only Muslims. Non-Muslim people may also prefer halal food as well, as it is seen as being clean food. The Halal Science Center at Jualongkorn University will certainly have an expanding role to play in this industry. I would like to thank Dr. Winai Dalan, founding director of Halal Science Center for being with us. I hope you enjoy our program. You can listen to Unlock the Science on Jura Radio Plus at FM 101.5 every Saturday from 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. You can also listen and follow us on our website, curadio.jula.ac.th and our Facebook page. Our program is also available as podcast. See you again next Saturday. Have a nice day. Unlock the Science is edited and produced by Sinfa Tunsorawut with Lawan Jirasurade as the program host and co-producer. 